hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we are here with the finale of our F222 Teo Porcher career mode. Yes, 27 races down, one final one to go in this series. If you missed out on the video that went live yesterday, I would highly, highly recommend going back and checking out. But yeah, the Drivers' Championship might all be decided, but there is still a little bit to play for in the Constructors there. 23 points. We are ahead of you and I, Virtuosi, as we head into the final race of the year. Jack Dewan and Marino Sato have been much more consistent uh, th than Fred Vesti, to be honest. He's been useless uh, pretty much throughout the entirety of this campaign. So we might have to try and score some points here today. Of course, just like the race we did yesterday, we're going to be starting right from the back of the field. But for one final time then here on F122, this might be the last time I get a chance to drive the F2 cars on this game. Let's get into it. Get yourself subscribed as well for more Formula 1 content. But here we go. Abu Dhabi, final race as Teoport Chair. And we're back for today's second sprint race. We've reversed the top 10 on the grid and the drivers are almost set. This is looking to be a thrilling conclusion to the end of day one. Yas Marina Circuit is a 3.2 mile racetrack built on the man-made Yas Island. In addition to the 16 corners, it features two very long straights. Now these will be the driver's main overtaking chances today into turn five and turn seven. As we're now moments away from the off, let's take a look at the grid order in which they'll start today's race. A fantastic effort from Chen Bullock Bussy yesterday puts him on pole position with Logan Sargent alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid we have Drugovic, Duan, Amory Cordiel, and Michaud, Sato, Deruvula, Armstrong, Liam Lawson, Novelak, Awasa, Ollie Caldwell, Vesti, Fittipaldi, Hughes, Phipps, Callan Williams, Hauger, Nissani, Boschon, and Teo Porcher completes the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. Right, well, here we are then, one final time here in Formula 2. I always love doing these series. They're so much fun and just a little bit different to anything else on the channel. So a massive thank you to all of you that have stuck around throughout the entirety of this campaign. One final time, then we'll go with the alternate strategy, try and be really, really quick towards the end of the race. But maybe we're going to see a lot of other cars go with it as well. They're looking very, very overcast and it does appear that everyone is doing the alternate strap. The other real question on everybody's mind, will Ralph Boschon bin it at the end of the formation lap? All right, here we go then. Moment of truth time. Will Ralph Boschon bin it as he tries to line up on the grid ready to finish off this formation lap? Yes! No, he won't. Well held by Ralph Boschon there. That was actually quite impressive. But lining up then on the grid for the final time. Final race then of the season here from Abu Dhabi. Waiting on those five red lights lights out and away we go there and Ralph Bosham despite the fact he's starting the right way this time round neither of us are going to get a particularly good run as we head down in towards turn one we will get to the inside of the Swiss driver there is Dennis Hauger looking just to get a bit squeezed now off of turn one there so we'll try and get up the inside of him through turn two and you can see everyone's like Noah's up two by two as we head through turn three there Roy Nassani just with a bit of a brake check that third corner, but we do all make it through clean and tidy. No harm, no foul. As up the inside will go then of absolutely everybody. Try to have a look potentially for a move on Callum Williams, but just knew we were going to get turned in on. But we will be straight up then into P17 of this race. So five places gained off the start. We might be able to make it six if I can get into the slipstream. Wally Caldwell as we head down the back straight way to the inside of the British driver will go. Who tries to move in on me. Three wide as we head in some also chicane there. Everyone trying to just go for it final race of the year of course moves have got to be made as soon as possible of course and we've got to be very very careful of where those you and i virtuosi cars end up in the gp today we'll all over the back then of a yumo Asa, of course has had a very very strong season in fia formula 2 will be returning with dams in real life 2023 as well if i'm not mistaken but he is now the driver with a target on his back as we might try and go a little bit wide on the way in but sneak to the inside of a Yumu in towards the final sector there and up to P15 then before we get to the end of lap one. Looks like Fred Vesti as well in P13 there. He's not done too badly. He's now trying to apply some pressure 
to Jake Hughes there. Has had a very, very up and down season. Young Jake Hughes, or not so young Jake Hughes, to be honest, in the Van Amersport car. But rounding out the final corner, Jembolic Bassi leads the way at the end of that one. We get a big, big snap of oversteer there as we try and put the power down. So we've got yellow flags out. So we head back through turn one. Again, almost looping it over that curbing there, as I think it might be a Wassa that's out of the race there. So just as I was appraising Yumu out of the final race of the year there, like I said, return with Dams in 2023. His 2022 campaign is going to come to an end 15 laps earlier than I'm sure he would have wanted. JQ's Hughes there much earlier on the brakes than I was expecting, just the Constantina and up. So we'll accidentally a bit of a panic moment there as we got to the inside. Oh, sorry, the outside even of the Van Amersport car, but P14 then. So we really have made a lot of progress early on, looking at those UNI Virtuoses. One of them is P4, um, so that means, yeah, unless the other one was ahead of them, uh, they wouldn't do enough to be crown champions. Of course, it would be nice just to make sure that we lock out this constructor's crown, but yeah, have got to wait and see as Fred Vesti doesn't look like, once again, he's going to contribute much. Lurking down in P13, but he is still beating me. Yeah, we didn't really see much of Fred in the first half of the year, but felt like I've had quite a few wheel-to-wheel -wheel battles with our teammate in the second half of the campaign. To the inside of Frederick will go. And that is potentially a Fernando is faster than you down at ART there. It's quite an easy move in the end, as now, of course, we'll add the DRS. At least unlike yesterday, we'll be able to use it at least for most laps in this GP. But Callum Williams up next as Fred Vesey will squeeze him the outside of us down the back straight. Will he be able to do anything? No, he will not, as I almost completely cream into the back of Gallon Williams. Lucky to get away with that one. Oh, there we go. Just what you want to see. DRS failure as we start lap four. So at the stop, we try to go for moves up the inside of Gallon Williams. But, of course, could, could we get any more luck than that? A nice DRS failure early on in this GP. Luckily, unlike Hungary, it's closed. Um, but yeah, that's going to really cost us down the straights. Eleven novel at then. Again, apparently the final corner is becoming my favourite place to make overtakes as we'll dive it up the inside of our fellow Frenchman. Of course, has really been an arrival for us for a lot of this championship, but we've only on to lap five. And I've already overtaken half the field here. It's been a much better early race than yesterday. I, I don't want to say it too soon. Could we win this from the back of the grid? What a way that would be. To finish out the season. I guess it is just the extra downforce, but yeah, the final corner really is just my place to make moves happen so far this race. Jay Anderuvel is going to try and defend a little bit more than most, but up the inside we'll go now into the points of this GP. 37-6, that time around new personal best for the day. We are really in the swing of things at the moment. Oh, there we go. New fastest lap of the day. Almost at the halfway stage, and we will finish this year on the softest tyres available on F122, the super soft tyres, of course the purple wall tyres, I often get questions on these videos how on earth we're using super softs, they're still regulation in Formula 2, they probably won't get scrapped until new Formula 2 cars come in, but up the inside of Marcus Armstrong, up now into ninth place then, and of course every place we gain just massively slims down the chances that you and I virtuosi can take the Constructors' Championship. Of course, there are loads of different hypothetical scenarios, but I'm pretty certain as long as we're in 8 or higher, as long as I beat one of them, they can't get a crown. There we go, another new fast lap of the day. Only by fractions of a second, but clearly we don't need the DRS at the moment. I mean, I wouldn't mind having it. Certainly don't get me wrong, but yeah, we are still able to run some very, very quick times here as we're getting quite aggressive with the way we're able to attack the curbs, as we made a move on Armstrong last time around. Are we going to be able to get past the other Kiwi as we head down into the hairpin? Liam Lawson trying to defend from us, but this time around it's a Red Bull delivered car getting no overtaken moment, down at the hairpin rather than making the moves. But up into eighth, but Lawson is of course going to have the DRS on me as we head up the back straight. So surely he's just going to be able to peel at least back alongside me there. We're going to have to again be quite aggressive on the brakes side by side with Liam Lawson but of course he's carrying that bit of extra speed in so we can break a few feet later and P8 is now ours for the taking although I say that Lawson will still once more have the DRS of course the double back-to-back -back DRS zones around this circuit but he doesn't seem to be able to gain quite enough on me he looks to the outside we open that door for him but inside for the next corner this one is now settled as yeah we can really do with getting that DRS back 
these ART. That would, that would be quite nice. As ask and you shall receive, apparently. The DRS, as soon as I say that, gets re-enabled. So we're going to get one more lap before we box with it. That is timing to perfection. Trying to see how handy that DRS is once again. Then it's all over the back of Marino Sato. He has got the DRS on the shore in front of him. But a very, very faint slipstream. And this could be a critical move for the Constructors' Championship. As Tilly inside of Sato will go. You can tell he's under pressure there. Huge lockup. He's practically turned that tyre into a 50 pence piece by the time we get into the actual apex but another move pulled off into seventh place then with still seven laps to go of this feature race we are going to dive into the pits though at the end of this one the shore and cordial next cars in front as into the pits we must go e-i-e-i-e-i-o amory cordial there just in front of us there's nice double lock up in towards the pit lane entry there just like kept it between the white lines no! <laughs> no! Final pit entry of the year. And I go and pick up a five second penalty. So any hopes we had at trying to do a last question mark here are now becoming a whole lot more difficult. So can we try and make sure that we still get a nice clean tidy stop? Come on, let me go. There we go. Not too bad. 4.1 actually is pretty good going around this circuit. And we will get the jump on our recall deal. So okay. You've done pretty well there as we head back out of the pit lane. Logan Sargent not far in front either. And yeah, perhaps we have actually gained a little bit from that pit stop there as we try and head back out into the circuit. Of course, cold rubber, everything like that. Got to be careful. But now we've got the purple wall tyres to see us through to the flag. But a five second penalty to contend with. Fred Vesti into the pits then, as well as a whole host of other cars there. I think, yeah, we were certainly one of the big winners from that pit stop cycle. So maybe speeding into the pit lane. Probably not worth the five second penalty, but might have gained us a second or two in the process as we head our way through the final couple of turns. We might be up into about a net P5 then of this GP. It might even be more than that there as we could be out close to our big rival throughout pretty much this entire campaign. That being Felipe Drogovic. No, look at that run to P4. This has worked out miraculously for us then over those couple of laps. Like I said, I don't think we've gained the full five seconds from it, but we've certainly gained a fair old chunk of time. And we might get to the lead of this race before okay, the end, the but five second advantage, five that might be a bit more difficult. New fast laps coming in, but we're going to smash them out of the park now. 135.3, new fastest lap for the event so far. And now we can see we should be within the range of Logan Sargent, but there's always that horrible whoa, psychology as well, of course. When you do speed into the pit lane like that, where you're just a couple of miles an hour over, you kind of think, why didn't I just hoof the throttle? all the way in. Of course, hindsight is a beautiful, beautiful thing in the world of motorsport. But as we head out onto the back straight, we are going to be now be within the DRS range of Sargent. Five laps to go here. We could get to the front in this race, but yeah, holding on to it, probably not going to happen. But we'll give it the best shot. It's into the braking zone we go. You can see still taking more and more time out of a Carlin car. Would be nice to get ahead of him before the end of the second straight, but I don't think it's quite going to happen. As Jack doing there, trying to battle it out with our race leader. I think that is still, yeah, Jen Bollock Massey, of course, would love to finish the year with a win in what has been a very, very difficult campaign for him and uh, Troy. No, not Troy, it's Charus, isn't it? Of course, but all over the back now. Of Logan Sargent as we head in towards... I'm, I've muscled him out of the way. And of Span on the exit. Oh, any dreams we had. They're all gone. They're all gone in the championship finale there. I mean, it was never a good move on Logan Sargent. We've kind of tried to chuck it to the inside right at the last moment. But you know, you've got to try and take big risks in these final couple of races of the year. Especially, like I said, with the Drivers' Championship all sewn up. But, I mean, if... If, yeah, uh, Doohan gets to the lead, we could be in a bit of a trouble here. Of course, we need to try and... If Doohan wins and Sato doesn't score, we need two points from this race. Um, it looks like... Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, it looks like Sato might just score a point or two. So we still need to finish, like, seventh or eighth here. We've got to keep pushing on to the end. Have I just bottled it? I hope not. I've already lost one Constructors' Championship in Abu Dhabi. Of course, Lewis Hamilton, with that mechanical failure in his last ever Formula 1 Grand Prix, cost us the Constructors to Red Bull during my team Season 3. But to the inside, then, of Amory Cordial. 
who clearly didn't see me there. We will slot through, and now we've got to try and monitor the gap. So Richard Vashaw is about three seconds behind Cordiel. So I think, it, yeah, if we could get close to Sergeant again by the end, it would still be okay. Three more laps to do it. I'm not panicking just yet, but we might have to shortly. Because, of course, the real reason I did spin in this final race here was just so we could try and get one last wheel-to-wheel -wheel battle with Felipe Drogovic there. It was a little bit wide through turn one, but able to attack the curbs nicely through turn two and turn three. The AI really don't like to take the big risk over that curbing, but are we now going to get close enough to make a move on Drogovic? Not quite into the hairpin, but we'll get the DRS. Almost pushed him along through that corner. It has been a bit of a shame to sort of see Drogovic, you know, this weekend he's been a bit stronger once more, but really, yes, yeah, since Hungary onwards, not quite been the same as he was early on in the campaign, and maybe it was that move in the Castellet that really did dishearten him, but to the outside of our big title rival, or not really our title rival, of course, no more. He's going to try and keep the nose there. We'll give him the room. What a good, clean battle between two great races, of course, have taken so many wins between us about the entirety of this campaign, but we will sneak through on Felipe Drogovic. We're going to force him to the outside in towards the hairpin. And now just over two laps to go. We've got a pretty good gap at the moment. So the Richard Vashaw further back. But we need to try and close in a bit on Sergeant. It would have been lovely to do a last to first here, but yeah, we, we might just have got a bit brave with the overtake on Logan. Or like I said, it wasn't really an overtake attempt. It was more avoidance. I tell you what, though, starting the final lap then here from Abu Dhabi. Jack Dewan has just pulled off the move for the race lead here, so he has not given up for Virtuosi just yet here as we head back down in through turn one. Of course, we always like to showcase the final lap of any series that we do on this channel. But like I said, you know, the F2 career mode this year, for whatever reason, maybe it's the fact the real-life F2 season wasn't particularly exciting Maybe, you know, it's just F122, the interest hasn't quite been there, especially uh, with the World Cup running for a lot of this series. Now, it hasn't quite received the same support as it has done in previous years, but that being said, it's still been absolutely fantastic fun there. Jack Dewan looks like he is going to take the win, so as long as we still finish ahead of uh, Sato in this race, we should still outscore them by enough there, and it might be a case of fastest lap points are going to decide this thing. I think we're going to best come P6. Of course, we'll get the fast lap bonus point as well, so it might only be two points in it there. It looks like we've still got Sato trying to apply pressure, so I think it's got to be the trident of Richard Vashaw and Logan... Uh, sorry, Liam Lawson battling further back there. So Formula 2 is going to reach a climax here. It wasn't quite the battle that we thought it would all be. And in the end, of course, MP Motorsport and ART both not battling for P2 in the championship has meant that neither of us are going to finish P2. But you and I, Virtuosi, have been super consistent. Jack Dewan has been an absolute driver in the second half of the year. But through the final corner, I can't afford to slow down. We're going to finish P4. And that's the end of the race. We'll see you in half early. Brilliant stuff from Virtuosi today. That's another historic win. And I have to wonder, Davide Valsecchi, just what set them apart from the competition here? It was down to one thing, consistent pace over everyone else out there on the track. We could spend a great deal of time talking about race and tire strategy, what is so cool on the track, but at the end of the day, the difference here was down to simply being faster on track than everyone else. Amazing skill on show. Here are our podium drivers today after that excellent race. They've excelled here as they so often do, and it's a well-deserved victory. Virtuosi then are on top today. Not the best weekend for our championship leader and their advantage at the top has been reduced. And now, Davide Valsecchi, let me ask you, who is your driver of the day? My driver of the day was Theo Pucher. 
He did a cracking job moving through the field. Just a very good race. And the title is in the bag for ART after a long and hard-fought season. They've done astonishingly well this year, and the glory they'll be taking back home is fully deserved. After all this drama, you'll be mad not to join us for the next race. We hope to see you then. Take care. Well, there we are then. The end of the F2 series and confirmation from Alex Jakes. We've done it. We have done enough. We are Constructors Champions there. 22nd to 6th after our penalty. Like I said, have we not sped into the pit lane? Had I not missed time the move on Logan Sargent there? I do genuinely believe a last to first would have been possible in the final race of the campaign. But Jack doing, you know, another win for him late on in the year there. He has been absolutely flying later in the second half of the championship. Jem Bollock, Bassi, P2 ahead of Sergeant Drogovic, Cordiel, myself, Armstrong, Lawson, Vashore, and Sato there. Only able to finish P10. I thought he was running a little bit higher up the roster. You can see our teammate Fred Vesti, 14th, and only Iyuma Oasa unable to finish the final race of the campaign. But it does mean championship-wise... Jack Dewan has done it. So Dewan beats out Drogovic come the end of the year there. Goes to show just how badly Dewan has, uh, sorry, Drogovic has fallen off late on in the series there. And also just how consistently quick Jack Dewan has been in the second half of the campaign. Jem Bollock Bassi does finish P4 ahead of Jay and Ruvula as well there. So plenty of movers in the final race of the series. Marcus Armstrong in P6 there ahead of Sergeant and Vashaw as well as Sato who all jumped Callum Williams after that chaotic final race of the campaign there. Awasa does stay in P11 just ahead of Amory Cordiel who jumps Helga and Yuri Vips. Liam Lawson jumps Clement Novelak. Fred Vesti there down in P17 ahead of Jake Hughes, Ollie Caldwell, Enzo Fittipaldi 29 points to his name with just Roy Nassani and Ralph Boshong unable to score come the end of the year. Constructors wise though we do take it just six points between us. Had we had another weekend I think you and I virtuosi would have probably done enough there to claim the crown. MP Motorsport P3 in both the drivers and constructors not quite able to emulate the success that Drogovic saw in real life. Prima P4 ahead of Trident. High Tech just hang on ahead of Carlin and Charousse with Van Amersport in their first year of FIA Formula 2 finishing P9 ahead of Dams and Campos. But yeah, I don't know what else to say. Thank you all so, so much for the support throughout the entirety of this F2 series. Like I said, you know, hasn't quite been as popular as previous games, but we will most likely return on F123 with another campaign. Maybe we'll do one before then as well if 2023 Formula 2 is absolutely explosive as well. But thank you all so much as always for the continued support. Make sure you get yourself subscribed and leave a like as well if you've enjoyed. And we'll be back very, very soon with more. Formula One related content. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below. And yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.